geek workers. They often get called things like lazy, unintelligent, entitled, and skillless, just to name a few. In this docuseries, we talk to the people who are a part of a new and kind of confusing to some way of making a living in today's society. We will get to know what career field they were previously in and what drove them into entering the gig economy. You will get an inside look into the real people and not just a name and a picture on a phone screen. Welcome to our appealing lives. Today's episode is featuring Miko the Entrepreneur. Let's hear about her experience in the gig economy. What is your plan after gig work or do you plan on staying in the gig economy at all? I don't mind staying in the gig economy because like I said, gig economy is just not food delivery. Right. You know, so I do have other goals like uh, being an executive producer, VP for TV and film, which that takes time and money. Oh, and I've been a producer too for, for this, um, it was uh, like web webisode. I had to go out and get stories and stuff like that. So I was a producer in one time, so I know how that is. You have to choose location and stuff like that. But yeah, um, I always talk about that. I always wanted to be executive producer for TV reality shows and film. And um, I even like people who are trying to get into film production, like trying to get their shorts, mm-hmm. you know, trying to do like um, short films. Um, like hey you know put me as an EP I can you know give you a hundred dollars towards this you know because sometimes you just need like um food just to pay the people you know and well it's like an exchange because you know when you're just getting started you don't have any money right so you need people to work for free (laughs) but if you feed people because I always did that too up and coming, I, I've done so many projects where I literally worked for food. Because mm. they'll put that credit on my resume. Right, right. That's, that's what, what I did. That's what it's all about. You know? So um, I do plan to stay. I don't plan to stay as a driver, a food delivery driver, like for the rest of my life. Right. But. I will, I wouldn't mind, like, even with my channel, because I'm trying to, like, change my channel where um, I'm doing, you know, DoorDash and Uber Eats and I'm doing shopping pays. Eventually, I want to focus more on doing, um, not really interviews per se, but, like, showcasing other entrepreneurs and, you know, uh, whether it's, like, wearing their t-shirt, wearing their hat, um, just telling people, hey, go out and you know do this, supporting foundations, stuff like that. I want to get more into doing that. That's why I changed my channel from food delivery scooter entrepreneur to me go to entrepreneur. And then if I do, if I do touch on like DoorDash or Uber Eats, I want it to be like, what are the stories? You know, good stories, right. not drunk, but good stories. Right. <laughs> you know, so, no drama. So yeah, that's pretty much my plans. Like, I want to run like my food trailer. You know, I'm a small business owner as well, so I'm rocking the pointing to the wrong side. (laughs) 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 I'm trying to figure out what side it was on. Okay, but I'm looking this way. Uh huh. (laughs) I am. Uh I am. So (laughs) this is my brand. Um, I started this business. in Nashville, actually, no, I started, I wanted to start it here, actually, let's go back. So originally I was supposed to start this business. It wasn't named Dope Beverage, but I was just supposed to start this with someone in Orlando when I first moved here in 2008. It didn't go well. Um, we were on two different paths, you know, she figured, oh, you have an MBA and an experience and I have this, so you do all the work. and. To me, I just, I didn't like that. That's how it came across. Now, I'm not saying she said that or whatever, but that's how it came across to me. But she had her hands in so many projects. And I'm like, I'm not doing this by myself, you know? So it was on pause. And then I relocated to Nashville. 
I was there for three years and then I moved to Houston and I was there for three and a half years and then I started March 2020 I started out as a um, cloud kitchen and I was selling donuts and alkaline water and um, almond milk fruit and grease and doordash Ah. I was doing that. So I started out that way. I did it for nine, maybe, like, I did it from March 2020 through maybe September, October. Okay. And then I needed a break because I was going out of the garage. And so I did research on how can I get a, like, a little spot. And I ended up going to this mall. And it was still during COVID, so there wasn't a lot of people coming out or whatever. And the rent was in my budget. So um, I went with them and then I changed my whole menu. Um, I left DoorDash as a merchant because uh, mm-hmm. they didn't pay me. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I'm gonna leave it at that. Cause I don't wanna, you know, I don't want people to be like, well, why are you driving for them? It's right, different. Right. It's, a, it's way different. It's totally different as a driver. I've been a merchant with them, so I know. But um, would I do, would I be a merchant with them in the future? Never, mm. never. I'll just stay as a driver. I'll just say that. I have, I know I'm going to get my money as a driver. Right. But as the merchant, they gave me every excuse not to pay me. And I'm like, I did those orders. I did those orders. That's crazy. So, but Uber Eats, I can say I never had a problem with Uber Eats. I got paid every Monday or Tuesday, whenever it was. And it was just a really good support for Uber Eats. So if, and I'm not telling people what to do, but as a merchant, if you want your yeah. restaurant or your business on DoorDash, just be careful. Just be careful, you better make them a lot of money because if you make them a little money, they're gonna try to keep it. Dang. Mm. I only made them a little money, so they, they kept that. <laughs> Yeah, y'all, y'all heard it first, man. Y'all heard it first. <laughs> um, and then after that, I was at the mall for, and I had a totally different menu. So I started making funnel cakes, and I started making the mini donuts on my own. And actually, on my channel, I do have um, where I got a thirty-second and a one-minute video. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. And. Uh, yeah, actually, it's on the Dove Beverage channel, my second channel. So check that out. And um, I think I did that for a year. And then I said, you know, I'm going to move to Orlando. I'm going to move back here. And so moved back here in December of last year and went to uh, a company that built food trucks. And um, I purchased, I got financed for a food trailer. Nice, nice. It's uh, not promised per se, but they claimed that I was supposed to have it by May of this year. So mm. I, I was financed and I've been making payments. And then I get an email saying, you know, what's, what's going on? I'm getting closer to having this food trailer. And then they sent me this email. I did a video on it, it on the Nico the Entrepreneur channel one step closer to getting my food trailer so check that out so you can have a better understanding on that i'm just trying to um you know do the food trailer part so like i said i started in houston and now that i'm here i have to like not start over per se um but i have to get people to get to know me here right so it's kind of like a first start right i'm continuing but it's more of a pressure. I got you. So I well, can't wait to jump on that. Um, but yeah, I I don't I wouldn't mind staying in the gig economy because even my food trailer could be gig economy. It is. Yeah, I was thinking that. catering catering orders. Yep. Right, because mm-hmm. I can, you know, instead of just going to a spot paying rent, I can just do only catering orders. So when people have weddings, graduations, birthdays, you know, their own brand opening for something, they can request me. That's still being in the gig economy. So I think I will always um, be part of the gig economy. And it's not necessarily only just driving, being a 
delivery driver or ride share. That's great. That's great. So y'all go check her out. It is a dough beverage. Okay. I'm gonna put some all kind of stuff. so y'all can go check it out you know what i'm saying what advice would you give somebody who's considering joining the gig economy think outside of food delivery and ride share if you have other skills like being an electrician being a painter being a maintenance person right you know uh knowing how to make t-shirts whatever i would say always have and it's not just apps always have so many skills where you'll always have income yeah even on your slow day you will always have income have some type of um I don't want to say job, but have some type of hustle where it's making you money when you're sleeping. And I'm not talking about stocks. Right, right. Everybody else is like stocks. <laughs> Speaking of stock, I don't know. I didn't mention this. Um, but Uber, they did, um, when they went public, before they went public, they gave, um, drivers so much money to like buy shares they uh, gave you five hundred dollars they I gave you about public. this that's when they went public years ago before they were on public they gave now i started with them 2015 so when did they when they became not public, was it 2018 2019 i don't i don't even remember when that happened to be honest I would have to Google it. <laughs> well, I started in 2015. Then they, then they branch out like as a brand. Wasn't it like 2009, 2010, or 2011 or something like that when they first came? Out? Oh, when they first came out, yeah, yeah. it was. I think it was 20, 2012, 2012 when okay. they first came out. I believe. I, yeah, I don't have the year in front of me, but if it was 2012, so just think about how much those drivers got. And they don't. Yeah. Yeah. They gave me 500. Yeah. They wanted me to buy 10 shares because it was like 50, like 45, 50 dollars per share when they first started. Mm. Well, I only bought five. <laughs> 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 Don't judge me. <laughs> Listen, she's like, I, I can I'll use buy, this. Buy have, else. <laughs> I only have five shares. So I'm a shareholder nothing because I, look how they treat me i'm at 33 percent. they don't show me no love but i mean you're a shareholder you know what i'm saying that's five that's shares start. that's nothing though that's a start there's five more than me <laughs> but it's been, it's been a roller coaster up and down and it's through morgan stanley mm. so i looked at it the other day because i was gonna do a video but um like it it only increased maybe like two or three dollars but then it, when it drops it drops like ten dollars yeah. i think now it's probably like maybe 40 something or maybe less than that per share now i think mm. Well, you, you oh, kind of yeah. answered your question why you getting bad orders. <laughs> That's why. You're a shareholder. You don't need nothing else. <laughs> they're, they're like, listen, we ain't making enough, so we can't pay the drivers. We got to take it some from somewhere. You know? Right. And they oh, got to they gotta give it to their shareholders, man. Without the shareholders, they don't have a company, so. But, yeah, so I'm not getting anything. But, yeah, so I have that. Maybe I'll do a video showing, like, my... You should my balance or whatever that's a great idea that's something way different than any other driver could even give because none of us have that yeah and you got a story behind it because you could say the company gave you the money yeah they did that would be the advice just have enough skills enough hustles to make you money even while you're sleeping Mm -hmm. whether it's a youtube channel 
right? Mm-hmm. Whether it's a social media, other pla- type of platform. Um, like I said, check out stocks. That's the first thing people say. Yeah. It can be real estate, you know, it can be other forms of income. But yeah, always be resourceful and skillful. That's great advice. Do you have any last words? Anything else you want to just share with the people? <laughs> uh, I would say my last words would be thank you for doing this interview with me. Um, no I'm glad that I met you. I think probably what I would say is, you know, if you're going to do YouTube or any type of social media platform, just stick with it. I know when I started my channel, um, I didn't know how it was going to go, to be honest. I mean, I was on a scooter. I was doing food delivery, you know, at the time. And I didn't get a lot of views. You know, I'm not saying I get a lot now, but um, mm-hmm. I didn't really get a lot of support from the community. Um, because of so much drama and stuff like that. So if you're on the path of starting a YouTube channel, just make sure that you don't pick and choose a side. That's advice. Don't pick and choose, just remain in the middle. Always remain in the middle. (laughs) And you have to be patient and not worry about what other people think of you because whether you're rich poor short fat you know where i'm going with mm-hmm. people don't talk about you they don't always have something to say so if they don't always talk about you and have something to say give them something to talk about that's it <laughs> yeah that's the only thing i could say that's great they great way to end it off um i thank you again for coming um this is really special to me like this project is like my baby so i'm just so happy that you came and supported because i'm just trying to do something different and i'm i'm very very excited about you being here um you give so much so much to the community this this is an incredible incredible person i got to sit down and have this interview with so again i want to thank you so much for stopping by and um yeah that's it wrapping it up that's it we out